Okay, so we got two vectors here. So this is one vector and this is another vector. And we want to find the angle between vectors. So maybe this is a quick refresher um, about that, but I'm going to get into exactly what we need to do here uh, step by step. Um, again, just a quick review though, for those of you that don't really know what a vector is, you're just like, no, I just want to learn something new. A vector is a, um, it's a, well, we kind of represent vectors by arrows. Think of it as having a magnitude and a direction. So let's say an airplane is going at this, uh, let's say four, uh, zero degrees at uh, 800 miles per hour. Okay, so there's a scalar component and a directional component. This uh, together combined as one is a vector. Okay, so if you're just like saying, you know, I'm just interested in vectors. Well, this is a vector. Okay, so you can see we have this arrow is representing this particular vector V and this arrow is re uh, representing this particular vector U. And what we want to do is find the angle between those uh, two vectors. So if you want to, you know, again, just learn something new, let's just give you a basic definition of vectors. All right, so let's get into this. Let's find the um, angle between two vectors. And let's take a look at the problem a little more clearly here. And I'm going to give you a hint. So if you want to turn this into a little pop quiz for yourself, you're like, yeah, I know how to do this. I just need to kind of brush up on some things. And that's pretty cool. Uh, we could turn this into a little quiz and I'll give you a hint. What you need to know is the dot product. Okay. So when you study vectors, a lot of different things you study. Uh, we, you know, find the components of vectors. We find the magnitude of vectors. You should have a basic understanding of this uh, at, at this level. Okay. So if you're, or if you're learning, uh, vectors right now and you're at the point where you're uh, studying the dot product. Well, previously to that, you should have learned how to find the magnitude of vectors and, uh, you know, like I said, the various vector components and you, know, you should be pretty familiar with vectors. Now, if you're totally lost and you probably want to go back and review some of that other stuff uh, before you get to this, but yeah, stick around. You're already this far into the video, but we need to learn something called the dot product. Now, the dot product is tremendously important and valuable. Uh, when it comes to vectors. Now, here we have two vectors. We have vector V and we have vector U. So we can find this thing called the dot product. Now, it's not like how you think like, you know, uh, multiplying in, let's say, algebra, binomial times a binomial. That's not the case. So when you do the dot product, we're going to end up with just some real number. Okay. It's not going to really, it's called, it, sometimes this is referred to as a scalar product. So it's going to get some number. You're like, okay, I found the dot product. What do I do with it? Well, not really much. Um, it's kind of like finding the, uh, the determinant of a matrix. It's just a number. However, we need to know how to find the dot product in order to solve this particular problem. So there's an excellent formula, very cool formula that uses the dot product that it can um, allow us to find the angle between these two vectors and kind of seeing this, uh, this problem graphically. So if you think you could do this problem, go ahead and uh, pause the video and uh, you know, go ahead and do it. Now I am going to show you the formula here. So if you forgot the formula, let's go ahead and move forward and I'll give you the formula now. Here, let's just do this so you don't see all my work. So here's the formula, okay? So uh, the cosine of this angle is equal to the dot product of those two vectors over the, the, uh, the product of the magnitude. Okay, that's the denominator. So you need to know the, how to find the magnitude of these two vectors. And that's just basically like applying the Pythagorean theorem uh, to this stuff. It's pretty easy. Um, so kind of like not a number crunching stuff going on here. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and try this problem, here's the formula. There you go. Have fun. But for those of you that are like, no, I don't know how to do this. Let's continue to plow forward. All right. So this is what we need to do. Okay. We need to um, find the dot product. So obviously we're going to need to know how to find the dot product. So this is stuff that's not that hard. Okay. So just stick around and then we're going to have to find the magnitude uh, this uh, vector here, u, and the magnitude of this vector, v, multiply them together, do a bunch of simplification, get a number, and then we can find the um, our cosine to find that angle. Okay? All right, so let's get to it. And here is my work. So let's look at these two uh, vectors. So uh, these vectors currently are what we call an i and j form. It's pretty typical, pretty common way uh, to represent vectors, but it's not the only way. So we have two i plus 5j 
and then we have 4i minus 3j, but I kind of wanted to put in a little extra bonus. I say, no, let's go ahead and use these bracket uh, notation uh, for these vectors. So 2, 5, we can represent, you almost kind of think of it as an xy coordinate, but we can represent uh, that vector um, using this notation. It's the same vector, just different notation. So it's this uh, bracket 2, 5, and then this vector here, uh, 4i minus 3j, I can represent as 4, uh, uh, comma, uh, negative 3. Okay, so typically, you know, you're going to be learning both, you know, you need to know both forms and, you know, it all depends on your teacher or what you're doing. You might be more uh, familiar with one form or another, but you should be able to work with both forms and they're, you know, equivalent. It's not that difficult to translate one into the other. But um, let's go ahead and continue on and set up this formula. Okay. All right. So now here's our vectors. All right. So here's the formula. So cosine theta, that's the angle between the two vectors, is going to be equal to the dot product, okay, this one vector, V, okay, uh, dot, we could just say, and that's how you say it, uh, V dot U, okay, that's going to be the dot product. So we're just going to write this up over the magnitude of this vector, okay, so it looks like these are little absolute value signs, but that's just finding the magnitude, and then here, is going to be the magnitude of that other vector. So you always want to just set up all your work before you start getting into the number crunching. Okay, now those of you that are not familiar with how to find the dot product, it's not that difficult at all. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, the numerator up here. So we're going to find the dot product. And what am I doing? So I got 2 times 4. So how did I do that? Well, I'm taking this component right here and I'm multiplying it by that. 2 times 4, then I'm going to add this component times uh, this. It's like almost kind of like the distributor property, 5 plus negative 3. Just follow that little formula. This is how you find the dot product every time. It's super easy, okay? So you could just see what I did. And we're going to add uh, all this up. This is going to be 8 plus negative 15. Of course, that's going to be negative 7, but we'll get to that in a second. All right, so that is the dot product. So if you never knew how to find the dot product, this is how you find it. Not that difficult. All right, so now what we want to do is find the magnitudes of these vectors down here. And, uh, and then we'll put all this together. All right, so cosine uh, theta, okay, the cosine of, of the angle uh, between these two vectors. Here we have the dot product, and now we need to find the magnitude. So how do we find a magnitude of this vector 2, 5? Well, you basically, you do this, okay? It's kind of like the Pythagorean theorem where this is like your A and B sides, and it's basically, the it's the magnitude, it's the distance of that arrow. So it's going to be positive, all right? So it's going to be uh, here, it's going to be 2 squared. All you do is just square this, and you're going to add it to the square of that, and you take the square root. Okay, so again, if you are studying vectors, you need to know how to find the magnitude of vectors. Hopefully most of you are like, yep, I know how to do this. So this is uh, 2 squared plus uh, 5 squared, of course, that's going to be the square root of 29. And now let's find the magnitude of this other vector. Uh, that's going to be the square root of 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. Just simple basic number crunching here. That's the square root of 25, and that's going to be 5. Again, we're talking about... Um, you know, the absolute value, the, the positive distance of our vector. Okay, that's the magnitude. That's 5. Okay, so now we have this. That's going to be negative 7. We know what this is. That's going to be the square root of 29. And we have this. That's going to be 5. So we're just going to go ahead and now substitute all these things in and start to uh, simplify this. Okay. All right, so... A cosine of the angle between those two vectors, here's our dot product, that all adds up to negative 7. And then here is our uh, magnitudes of our vectors, and that's 5 times the square root of 29. Again, we just calculated that, 5 uh, times the square root of 29. And so now let's go ahead and keep walking this forward. All right, so the cosine of that angle, remember we just simplified it as negative 7 over 5 times the square root of 29. We get our handy-dandy calculator out, and we simplify this into a decimal. That's approximately negative 0.26. All right, so, you know, this is where you wanted to get this problem to. You got the cosine of this angle is approximately negative 0.26. So, of course, you need to know some basic trigonometry, okay? So we need our calculator, obviously, as well. So we're going to use the arc cosine function. or say, okay, what angle has a cosine of negative 0.26. We plug this in to our calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode. Okay, of course you can get this answer as a radian, but you know, 
if you're not told one way or another, always just leave your calculator in degree mode. That's its default mode, and you get approximately 105 degrees. And that is it. So we can see this graphically down here. Okay, here's our vectors. Here's the angle between the two vectors. It's about 105 degrees. So if you need help with vectors or this level of mathematics, I certainly would encourage you, and you like my teaching style, certainly encourage you to check out my pre-calculus course. Again, I'm going to leave the direct link uh, to my pre-calculus course in the description of this video. But go get help. Okay, at this level, if you're already at this level of math, obviously, that means that you probably already have pretty good study habits. Okay, so probably most of you are doing the right things. But double down, talk to your teacher. You know, and you need to work hard as well because there's a lot going on at this level. But I am certainly uh, there to try to help you out the best I can. But uh, my best math help will be within my math help program. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics journeys. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.